one of the things I'd love to get your thoughts on this is uh, antiviral ideas. So ideas outside of the vaccine. Mm -hmm. So ivermectin, something that uh, Brett Weinstein and a few others have been talking about. There's been a few studies. Some of them have been shown not to be very good studies, but nevertheless, there seems to be some promise. And I wanted to talk to Brett uh, about this particular topic for two reasons. One, I was really bothered by censorship of this. That's a whole nother topic. I, I, I just, I'm, I'm bothered by censorship. This is a gray area, of course, mm -hmm. um, but I, it just feels like that should not have been censored from YouTube, like discussions of ivermectin. We can we can set that aside. The the other thing I was bothered by the lack of open mindedness, mindedness on exploring things like ivermectin in the early days, especially when at least I thought the vaccine would take a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just ivermectin, it's um, really seriously at a large scale, rigorously exploring the effectiveness of masks. And the big one for me is testing. Like the fact that that wasn't explored aggressively to lead to mass manufacturing like May, 2020 is as absurd. Anyway, uh, so I was bothered by these solutions mm -hmm. not being explored and not by now having really good ivermectin studies. So can I talk about ivermectin? Yeah, I would love that, yeah. Sure. So full disclosure, my wife worked on ivermectin at Merck for 20 years, <laughs> okay? So they just want people to know, but I didn't, uh, I don't talk to her all the time about it. And anyway, she hasn't been at Merck for a long time. As you know, ivermectin is a very safe drug used to treat certain parasitic infections, Yes. right? And it is approved... It's amazing. You can take one dose a year and be protected against river blindness in Africa, in certain parts of Africa. It's remarkably effective. And so um, it's quite a safe drug at the doses that are that are approved. Now, uh, early last year, a study was done, I believe in Australia, which showed in cells in the lab, if you infect with SARS-CoV-2 and, and put ivermectin in, it would inhibit the virus production substantially. It was quite clear, right? But the concentrations they were using were rather high and could not be achieved by uh, the, the, the approved dosing. So you would need to do a dosing study to make sure it's safe. And, be, and the reason is that ivermectin binds to receptors in your brain and it can have high doses. A lot of, some people take high doses inappropriately and they have neurological consequences. So if you needed 10 times more ivermectin, you'd have to make sure it would be safe in people. So there's a question of safety too. Right. So my, I think it has always been the case that it should have been properly studied, but it wasn't. There were lots of trials here and there, lots of improperly controlled trials where someone would just treat some patients and say, hey, they all did fine, but have no control arm. And there were some controlled trials, but they were very small. So right now, I... I 4,000 person trial is enroll, uh, enrolling to test in a randomly controlled trial setting, whether it works or not. There's still plenty of cases that you can do that. So you can ask whether and there, whether there are any side effects. I think that's completely fine. And if it says it works, then we should use it. In the meantime, I always tell people, if you want to use ivermectin, you can do it off label. It's FDA approved. Mm -hmm. And if your physician says, I'm going to give you this off label, I don't have a, a, any objection, yeah. but I don't know if it's going to work. And I, I, a friend of ours last week in New Jersey got COVID. He went to his local hospital and their regimen was remdesivir, dexamethasone, ivermectin. It's written, that's what they do for every COVID patient. They just give mm -hmm. it to them automatically. And um, wow. so he's he recovered. So- Who's to say it was or were not was not ivermectin, right? So I don't have any strong ideological opposition. I just think it should be tested for what you want to use it for. Yeah, and that's being done, and I think that's fine. Is it strange <laughs> to you that uh, ivermectin or other things like it weren't tested aggressively in the beginning? Like, well, from a broad scientific community aspect. You know, I can be a little bit conspiratorial, and this is what people talk about with ivermectin, mm -hmm. yeah. is with the vaccines, there's quite a lot of money to be made. With ivermectin, there's not as much money to be made. Is 
is that too conspiratorial? Like, why didn't we try more solutions in the beginning? Well, um, well, all the money was put into vaccines, right? right? Very little was put into antivirals because the decision was made at a very high level, probably involving Dr. Fauci. Yeah. We're going to put $24 billion into vaccines, right? Yeah. And I think part of the reasoning is they give you years worth of protection, whereas an antiviral works and you have to keep yeah. dosing and so forth. But ivermectin is not trivial in this. I, I agree it should have been tested early on, but we had a, a really bad experience with hydroxychloroquine, which we can right. talk about too. Um, ivermectin is very hard to synthesize. Most drugs you synthesize chemically. You you devise a formulation in a synthesis and they do it, they scale it up and it's fine. Ivermectin is really hard. And so what they do instead is they take the culture of the bacterium that makes it and they grow it up and they ferment it and then they purify it. And Merck owns the bacteria. A number of years ago, two employees of Merck stole it and left the company and tried to market it and they were arrested and they got put in jail. So they protect it very carefully. So you can't just make it. Mm. If you do, it's incredibly expensive. And now India, it's very cheap, apparently. They use it uh, quite liberally there. And I don't know how they're they're making it. Maybe they've licensed it from Merck and so forth. But that's why it hasn't been tested more widely, I think. There's complexities in terms of getting a lot of it and manufacturing a lot of it. Yes. Okay. So what, what was the other, the hydrochloroquine? So hydroxychloroquine was also shown... Uh, early on to inhibit virus in cell culture. And that's not surprising. Hydroxychloroquine, of course, is used for malaria. And what it does, it, it, when, you're, when your cell takes up things from the, from the plasma membrane, including viruses, it goes through a pathway called the endocytic pathway, which involves a vesicle moving through the cell. And as it moves through the cell, its pH drops. Mm -hmm. And that lets a lot of viruses out, actually, and hydroxychloroquine blocks that. So it blocks infection with a lot of viruses. So the problem with those early studies that were published is that they were done in kidney cells and culture, where the only way the virus can get in is through the endosome. And hydroxychloroquine inhibits that, and that's why it inhibits in kidney cells and culture. But lung cells and respiratory cells of humans where the virus reproduces can get in two different ways. It can get in from this endocytic pathway, which is inhibited by hydroxychloroquine, or it can get in at the cell surface, which is not inhibited by hydroxychloroquine. So when you treat patients, it has no effect in the lung because the virus can just bypass it. And all the usage initially were based on uh, the, the studies done in kidney cells and culture. So that, that was just wrong scientifically incorrect yet it drove a lot of and today many people still think they should be taking it but so like the that not panning out kind of resulted in a loss of optimism about other similar things panning well that out. and many other drugs repurposed drugs were tried right mm -hmm. a lot of hiv antivirals were tried i think the problem with with hydroxy i think hydroxychloroquine influenced the ivermectin narrative right people thought the data was being hidden about hydroxychloroquine. So they said, well, they must be doing the same thing with ivermectin. But with hydroxychloroquine, it just scientifically could not work as an antiviral. Mm. The, the other problem that is more broad that is important to point out is that when you, when you have COVID and you need an antiviral, it's usually because you can't breathe and you go in a hospital. Mm -hmm. Because if you're mildly ill, you're never going to go to your doctor and ask for an antiviral. And the problem is when you can't breathe, it's no longer a viral issue. It is now an inflammatory issue, and no antiviral in the world is going to help you. So if that's why remdesivir doesn't work very well, because it's mainly given intravenously to people who go in a hospital. Um, th if you get ivermectin in the hospital, it's not going to do anything for, for reducing virus, because by that time, you have very little virus to begin with you have an inflammatory problem that you need to treat in other ways. So this is why a lot of the antivirals failed because they're used too late. Yeah. What you need is a pill you take on that first positive test when you have a scratchy throat. Mm -hmm. You get a PCR in 15 minutes, I'm positive, take a pill, boom. That's gonna inhibit it. If you wait till you can't breathe 
And that's why the monoclonals even don't work if if you're in hospital that well, because it's too late. And the the approach now is if you're in a high risk group, if you're over 65, if you are obese or have diabetes or any other comorbidities, your first sign of a scratchy throat positive, you get monoclonals. Then they might help you. But if you wait till you go in a hospital, it's too late because the viral curve drops after that first symptom. Within three days, you're you're no longer shedding enough virus to transmit. Drops really quickly. So that's the reason a lot of these antivirals failed because they were tested in hospitalized patients. And we have nothing but remdesivir now, unfortunately. So it was the wrong approach. We should have been giving it to people who just tested positive from the start. But or just even for preventative and see. You could do that too. Yeah. But I have to say the other issue is uh, this molnupiravir is a drug in phase three now. It's an oral antiviral. It looks good. If we go ahead with just one, we're going to get resistance within a few months and it will be useless. We need to have at least two or three drugs that we can give in combinations. And we know that because that's what took care of HIV. That's what took care of HCV, hepatitis C virus. It really reduces the emergence of resistance. 